everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about security clearances, specifically what a security clearance is, why you might want to get one, why you might not want to get one, and how you can go about getting one without actually joining the military. This video is in response to a couple comments. I actually did get a security clearance myself without having to join the military. After I got the clearance, I went and worked abroad in Japan for a while. So I'll talk about that a little bit at the end as well. So getting right into it, a security clearance allows an individual to have access to certain information and systems that can contain classified national security information. There are kind of three main levels of security clearance. That is confidential, secret, and then top secret being the highest one. And inside the top secret level, there is also the sensitive compartmented information or SEI, currently known as TSSEI. Clearances are commonly issued to military personnel or government workers, but normal civilians can also get a clearance if they're working as a DOD contractor, or even if they're working as like a normal civilian for a private sector company, and that company happens to have have some kind of government contract where they'll they'll be working with sensitive government information. So getting into why you might want a security clearance, there's a bunch of reasons. First of all, there's like a bunch of jobs that become accessible to you like once you have one or you're able to obtain one. And a lot of these jobs are overseas like in Japan or Korea, Guam, Qatar, Kuwait, all over the place wherever the US government has a presence. So maybe you want to travel, maybe you have interest in working one of these places, having a clearance makes it much easier to get a job in these locations. There's also some pretty substantial tax benefits to working outside of the continental or outside of the contiguous US. If you Google Okinus tax exemption, an IRS document will come up that kind of talks about it a little bit. Also, since most of the population doesn't actually have a security clearance, it means the jobs actually requiring a clearance will have much less competition. It becomes much more easy for you to get these jobs. And lastly, a lot of the jobs that require clearances, especially the mid and upper level ones, have like really, really decent salary. For example, this job solicitation that I got to work in Kuwait, the recruiter just came right out and said, like this job is a 180k job and I'm sure that I can get like much more than that because it's in Kuwait and there's going to be like completion bonuses and like other bonuses maybe like a sign-on bonus and then I can probably negotiate because it's going to be it's probably pretty hard for them to find somebody at the appropriate level who has a clearance who's like willing to go out to Kuwait and actually like work this job there's a potential to make a decent amount of money if you have a security clearance and getting into the reasons why you might not want to have a security clearance like the whole process is pretty cumbersome it takes a long time and it can be quite invasive especially when you start getting into the TS, like the top secret levels. If you need a top secret clearance, an FBI special agent like will come to your work and start asking your coworkers and people like in your vicinity about you and like interviewing them. They may go to your home and like your surrounding neighbors and like interview them as well. I've actually had a special agent like come into my work and like interview me for someone who I had worked with in the past. It was like a really interesting experience, but just know it can be like pretty invasive and some people don't really like that. It's just something to keep in mind. And finally, getting into how to actually get a security clearance without joining the military. First, you have to be eligible to get one, and in order to be eligible, in most cases, you need to be a U.S. citizen. After you've established that you're a U.S. citizen, most technical jobs that require a security clearance will have some kind of certification requirement based on the DOD 8570 or DOD 8140. A lot of jobs will be classified as, for example, this is the actual job solicitation that I got in my email to go to Kuwait for 180K. This is the job description, and you can kind of see here uh, the certification requirement. It talks about it here, and it says IAT level three. And basically what this means, it's part of like the DOD directive 8570 baseline certifications. And you can kind of see those different levels. Like this is information assurance technical. This is like information assurance management. And this is something like information assurance, some acronym I can't remember. But basically this job had IAT level three requirements, which means I, you need to get one of these certifications to actually be eligible to work this job. And a lot of the times in defense contracts and jobs requiring clearances, they'll have like kind of two sets of requirements. They'll have like a baseline requirement and then they'll have a CE requirement, which is like a computing environment. So the baseline requirement to work this job, you need to be like IAT level three eligible. And then the computing environment cert, you have to get one of these certifications. So for the job that I got to work in Japan, my baseline cert was IAT level two. And then my CE certification requirement was CCNA. And at the time I had CISSP, which satisfies all the way up to level three for IAT and IAM. And then I had CCNA as well. So I was like eligible to actually go ahead and work that job. If you're really serious about trying to get a job that requires a clearance, I might go ahead and like preemptively try to get like an either IAM or IAT level three certification. I might recommend CISSP or Associative ISC squared if you don't have the experience requirement to just kind of like check off those two boxes. And if you want to go a step further, you might even consider like getting like one additional certification for the computing environment. You could get like CCNA, for example, or Microsoft's AZ 104, which is like the Microsoft Azure administrator, just to kind of have that on your belt, just to make you more attractive to any jobs that you might 
come across. It's just something to think about. That's kind of what I did and it ended up working out pretty well for me. So getting into how to actually search for a job that will sponsor you for a clearance if you don't already have one, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Like you can search on like individual like military contractor sites like Vectris or SAIC. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but a lot of the time you can find jobs that don't actually require you to have a clearance already. They'll have verbiage in them that says something like must be secret clearance eligible and or have the ability to obtain one. That kind of implies that you don't already have one, but you're able to obtain one, which means like maybe you need to be like a US citizen or you need to have a clean enough background to be able to get one, something like this. I would do search terms that, that have like ability to obtain a security clearance in them or must be able to obtain a security clearance, something like this. So this is just like a random job in Vectris and, and here's like a tier two help desk job from like SAIC. I just searched um, kind of these terms right here, must be able to obtain a security clearance. This kind of implies that you won't already have one. And you can kind of see at the top of this one too, it says um, minimum security clearance required none. Clearance level must be able to obtain top secret. So this would be a nice job to get, you know, theoretically, if you don't have a clearance, but you want to get like a TS, you could kind of make sure you have like the DOD 8570 requirements for this and just kind of apply for it and, and hope that you get it. You can also search these, these actual terms on Indeed. For example, I just searched here ability to obtain a secret clearance. And then you can kind of see a whole bunch of jobs came out, like almost 900 jobs came out. And you can see like some of these, like the salary is like quite high, right? Because maybe they're probably having a hard time like filling these positions. Another thing I would recommend is when you're applying for jobs for a clearance like initially instead of applying for jobs that need like top secret even if they're willing to sponsor it I might consider applying to jobs that require secret clearance because it's much easier to go from like no clearance to secret clearance and then go to like top secret clearance later because the whole adjudication process to go from like nothing to a top secret clearance like takes quite a long time like I don't know exactly how long it takes but it's probably around a year whereas getting like an interim secret clearance may take like a couple of months or, or even less than that so that's just something to consider for me the job I got in Japan for me to like go over there I just needed to have an interim secret clearance it didn't take that long it was like a it was like a few months for me for that whole process I talk about it in depth in this video so if you're curious about it and you want to see like all the actual emails that went back and forth between me and the recruiter go ahead and like check out this video otherwise thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it super shout out to all my patrons for supporting me thank you guys so much thank you everyone else for watching me this far and we will see you in the next video bye bye